Here's what you can expect from the 2021 Academy Awards. First of all, this year's Oscars is gonna be held in multiple locations around the world. The Los Angeles ceremony will have elements at the Dolby Theater, which you're seeing right here, where it's usually ha held, but we'll also have elements at the Los Angeles Union Station, which by the way, has remained a working train station even through <laughs> all of the preparations leading up to the big ceremony on Sunday. And to account for international nominees and guests who can't attend the U.S. event, the Oscars will also have ceremony outposts in both London mm -hmm. and Paris. So we've seen exterior shots of what to expect, right. but my biggest question is, is what can we expect on the inside? How are they going to make this Academy Awards chic right. and, and bring that Oscars flair to it? Well, in terms of the ambiance inside Union Station, Oscars production designer and Tony Award winner David Rockwell shared that they looked at at the very earliest roots of the Oscars where the first awards were held. So this is gonna be like a, a full circle moment. And those were at the Biltmore Hotel and the Roosevelt. So what you're seeing right here are sketch photos. And those awards from the beginning served as inspiration for what we're gonna see on Oscars night. There will be a woven ceiling of flowers. This is so like millennial and so 2021, <laughs> Denny. And it's gonna be a warm color scheme inspired by the Garden of Allah painting mm. and also round hanging lanterns. Now, this is my vibe. This is the vibe right. that I want for my backyard. <laughs> so this is definitely a spot on recreation of the actual Blossom Room at the Roosevelt in 1929. So we are transporting back in time, I Denny. Love it. And then there's another sketch. Rockwell said he wanted to create the elegance of the earliest Oscars and create a sense of shared celebration. Because I feel like we all need shared celebration after the year that we've been through and, and also the year of film. We're all, you know, we're kind of celebrating the end of the finish line, like you said. And that's what it is. And a lot of times I feel like the Academy Awards feel almost <laughs> too stuffy, so I'm glad it's got, got, the, got this old Hollywood yeah. party atmosphere. But of course, it's not a party unless it's safe because it is the <laughs> pandemic. And there are some COVID restrictions, <laughs> but in a press conference, uh, the Oscars producers, Jesse Collins, Stacey Schur, and Steven Soderbergh, they said that they have a lot of practice figuring out ways to get people back to work. And of course, these three are intimately familiar with the Oscars. I mean, Steven Soderbergh, for example, has directed more than 30 movies, and he does have an Oscar of his own. Stacey Schur has earned Best Picture nominations during her career. And remember, Jesse Collins has bec become the king of the COVID-era award show. Mm -hmm. He really set the standard with the BET Awards last year, the very first major award show during a pandemic. And then he went on to produce a couple little shows called The Grammys <laughs> and The Super Bowl Halftime Show. So Imagine being pegged as, like, the pandemic uh award show the producer go yeah the go-to so the big question also is who is going to be hosting well denny the answer is no one we actually <laughs> do not have a host this year which i feel like is good news for any covid co compliance officer it's one less body to have to worry That's about exactly right. and speaking of bodies Basically, everything at the Oscars this year will be minimal. It's definitely going to be a smaller crowd. Nominees only get one guest each. We'll also see presenters there as well as production staff and crew. So that's who you can expect to see glimpses of on camera. But I just mentioned the presenters. We have a list of some that have already been announced. We, we can expect to see 2020 acting winners Renee Zellweger, Joaquin Phoenix, Laura Dern, Brad Pitt. See, I couldn't even get the, I, you see me stumble on, on Joaquin because I saw Brad was right. coming up and I'm like, oh, we get a Brad Pitt Oscars uh, appearance. Also, Halle Berry, Don Cheadle, Brian Cranston, Harrison Ford, Regina King, Rita Moreno, Reese Witherspoon, and Zendaya. So no shortage of A-list talent That's at right. the Oscars this year. Including the nominees themselves. Now, you know, the Oscars decide to actually loosen up the controversial no Zoom option that was mm -hmm. previously placed. Uh, Soderbergh shared that instead of Zooms, there will be satellite hookups um, and they said the no Zoom rule was actually never about exclusion. It was just about how it would fit into the plan of what they hoped for mm -hmm. for the show. Here's my question for you, Cass. What are you most interested to see at this year's Academy Awards? <clears throat> Brad Pitt. Just right. kidding. No, honestly, as, Always because this is the finish line, the celebration of the end of an incredible roundup um, of movies that we have seen yeah. throughout the last year, the movies that kept us comfortable 
comforted during a time where we're all stuck at home. You know, it's going right. to be nice to see everyone gather together and have one last hurrah. And with that being said, I really hope this is the last pandemic era award show. But I also what are, what have, are you excited for? I have high standards, though, and high expectations because I feel like, you know, it, this is always the big one, right, at the end of right. a long award season. But it's also the last one during this pandemic. And I feel mm -hmm. like award shows over these la this, over this last year keep getting better and better. So uh, Academy, I'm holding out for you to pull the, off the best party during COVID-19. Time will tell, but what we do know is that E.T. will have you covered for all things Oscars. In fact, let's toss it over to E.T.'s Kevin Frazier, who's there on the ground at Union Station where Oscar preparations have begun. Welcome to what is an Oscars like no other for many different reasons, but most importantly, we are at Union Station in downtown LA, um, and it is a home to commuters each and every day and people who are traveling on Amtrak, but for the first time ever, it is home to the Oscars. Now, it first opened up in 1939, and lots of movies have been shot here, everything from Blade Runner to The Dark Knight Rises, but this is the first time the Oscars has ever been here. And the weird thing for us is that usually when we are in the Dolby Theater in Hollywood, we're inside those gates across the street. Now we are on the outside looking in, but we do know some of what will happen. There will be 170 people allowed inside, and that will include presenters, the nominees, and a plus one. We are told that it will look and feel very cinematic and movie-like. I don't know what that means. We also know that all the nominated songs will be performed during the pre-show and there will be a red carpet. After that, these Oscars are shrouded in mystery and that makes it exciting because we don't know what in the world could happen, but we are told the first 60 seconds will blow our minds. All right, we're looking forward to it. It'll be a different kind of night, but you know what? It's still the Oscars and there are still good movies and there are still awards to be handed out. Let's talk about some of the nominees. Obviously, the night is about honoring the amazing films of the year. And despite a unique year at the movie theater, the categories are still stacked with so many talented and deserving nominees. And we want to know who will win, but also who should win. I spoke with the founder and CEO of Pop Viewers, Chris Witherspoon, earlier this week for his thoughts. All right, Chris, we had to invite you back, man, to get your hot take on this year's biggest categories. We want to know who will win, but also who you think should win. Let's start with director, because this is such a groundbreaking year for this category. We have two women who are up for best director. It's the first time ever that more than one woman has ever been nominated in this category in the same year. So who do you think will win and who do you think should win? First off, thank you for having me back. I loved it last time talking Globes, and now it's Oscar season. So I think it's gonna come down to the two women. Emerald Fennell and Promising Young Woman is so phenomenal. Um, she just really, I think the campaign that they've had so far for the Oscars has put her as a clear front runner. They shot that movie in just 23 days, and she was like fully pregnant during the whole time of the shoot. So I think that she should win, do I think she will win? I do not. I think that the winner will be Chloe Zhao. She's won most of the major awards up until now. And I do love that when she wins, and I think that she will win, she will make history as the first Asian American woman uh, to win that award. And that's huge. That's amazing. And yeah, all signs point to her being a clear front runner for that category. I can't say the same for Best Actress. I feel like in that category, it feels Oof. to me a close race to the finish between Andrew Day and Viola Davis. What are your predictions here? Listen, I think it's gonna come down between those two ladies. Don't sleep on Carrie Mulligan though, because this, right? this award season, again, Promising Young Woman, the past two weeks has picked up so much momentum in her best performance of her career. But I do love that Andrew Day won the award for the Golden Globe. She really like kind of sort of had this moment where nobody was expecting her to win, but in my humble opinion, she also deserves to win this award. Of all the work this year, she transformed the most for that role. And she even said, talking about, you know, even trying out or, or being asked to play that role, she didn't feel she could do it. She didn't feel she was good enough. And Lee Daniels convinced her to do it, and she slayed. So I think she deserves this award. Uh, if she doesn't win it and Viola Davis wins it, I won't be mad. 
Right, exactly. I know, right? It's win-win for the rest of us. But I do, uh, you know, you're you're talking about like a, a, an Academy darling with Viola Davis, and of course she's racked up so many awards in her career. But then there's Andrew Day with this like tour de force performance, and of course we know the Academy loves biopics. So we'll see who takes yeah. that one. That that for me is the the category to watch for the night. But I do want to move on to Best Actor because we have another historic moment in this category with Stephen Yun uh, becoming the first Asian American to ever be nominated. But as you can see here. There's a, in, in fact, there's more than half of the nominees in this category that are non-white. Who do you think will win? Who do you think should win? Yeah, and props to the Academy for embracing diversity in a huge way. They've been on this mission for a while now to have more diverse members, and it's showing right now among the nominees. Who should win, who will win is Chadwick Boseman. May he rest in peace. He has cleaned up this award season. He's somewhere in the great beyond smiling down on us. The work that he did in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was his best uh, Was his best work. It was a very sort of smaller role in the film. He was not, you know, Ma Rainey, but at the end of the day, when you watch that monologue, that was sort of like where he was in life. It's so right. powerful. It's a short monologue, but it will make you, it will move you to tears. And I think that there won't be a dry eye in the house um, Sunday night whenever he wins. Especially because as we've seen, because he's definitely swept the award season so far, his wife. I mean, what stunning words she has given and blessed us with. So I hope somewhere she is practicing that speech ahead of Sunday oh because God. I think you're right, right? And she always makes me cry. Like she always brings on the waterworks and then I'm on, uh, on my couch putting down my ice cream crying. There you go. It's going to make that moment even more poignant than it already is for sure. But uh, let's get to the holy grail of the night, best picture. I'm so curious because we have, what, eight films here nominated. Who are you? What is your prediction here, Chris? You know, I think it's going to come down to one of two films. Now, I think the clear front runner, if you're like a Hollywood expert, you would say Mank because Mank has won or has earned the most nominations in total this year. But I really don't see Mank taking home a lot of awards. And I think mm. once voters sit down and watch the films, I believe Minari will probably be the one to win. <laughs> Okay. It, it reminds me of how Moonlight had that surprise moment. This movie, I think, is it's a great film. It's a beautiful film. The ensemble of the cast could not be more perfect. The visual, you know, from the director could not be more perfect. And I think where we are right now in this country, the message of embracing this film is so important. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, you know, with all that's happening right now with Asian hate crimes. So I do believe voters probably gave this film a second and a third look, and it deserves yeah. to win Best Picture. Not to mention to follow the after Parasite won Best Picture. I think that would send a really big message as far as representation within the walls of that of the Academy. So that would be an amazing. Plus, it was a beautiful film. I cried. Okay, and so oh my, my god, tears, it got me. Not, not that and my the tears are a sign you should win Best Picture, but uh. I right. think it was also a really entertaining film as well. You got to look mm -hmm. at a lot of the nominees. I think this year we don't have as many films that are genuinely like good movies you can watch with popcorn and like have like you can laugh, you can cry, the, those full circle of emotions. Minari gives you that. And I will also add real quick that don't get it twisted. It might mostly be in Korean, but this is such an American story and so deserving of the big prize of the night. But we'll see who takes it come Sunday. But in the meantime, Chris Witherspoon, founder and CEO of Pop Viewers, thank you so much for joining us and happy Oscars. Yes, thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy.